1989. After a 12-year journey, NASA's Voyager 2 mission reaches the outer solar system and the gas giant Neptune. First seeing the images of Neptune was, was really exciting because we went there with no idea what we were going to find and suddenly here are these high resolution images. It's a triumph for Voyager 2. But when NASA examines Triton, the largest of Neptune's 13 moons, they spot something disturbing. The moon is going the wrong way around the planet. When you look at the, the Earth-Moon system, the moon's going around the Earth just like this, kind of close to the equator of the Earth. When we look at Triton, what we see is the moon's going around in the other direction. It's the only large moon of any of the planets that does this. Triton's behavior seems completely unnatural. It contradicts everything we think we know about how planets and moons form. Most moons get created as the planet itself gets created. So you have this swirling ball of gas and, and, and materials that are collapsing down into the central planet, and then some debris left over collapses down into the satellite. So you expect all the objects to go in the same direction around uh, the planet. That's very understandable. What's not understandable is how do you get a moon, especially a large one, to go in the opposite direction. The resemblance to the planet-destroying artificial moons of the Star Wars movies is striking. As they're approaching the Death Star, Obi-Wan peers through the windshield and says, that's no moon. If you want to park in the solar system, keep an eye on Earth and all the interesting go things going on there, uh, Neptune's the perfect place to park your artificial planet. Triton's surface seems to support the theory. It appears to have areas that are smooth as metal, reflecting 70% of the sun's rays. Triton's a very confusing world. It's uh, the orbit and it's uh, the type of, planet, uh, of a moon it is. Yeah, Triton is very confusing. Even for the most skeptical scientist, all the evidence suggests that Triton is no ordinary moon. It's extremely unlikely that Triton formed orbiting around Neptune. It doesn't make any sense for it to have formed locally. There is one obvious problem with the Death Star theory. If I'm flying a artificial planet through space and I decide that I want to park it on Neptune, I'm going to be sure to go the right way around the planet if I'm trying to hide. Triton is not a Death Star. It's not made out of materials we'd expect it to be made out of if somebody was building a thing. It's made out of natural materials that, that we expect. But if Triton is not artificial, why is its surface smooth? In Triton, we saw eruptions of, of material into its thin atmosphere. Watery eruptions can uh, freeze and, and make a smooth surface, at least filling in the impact craters. People call it cryovolcanism, an ice-based, cold, volcanic process. That still leaves the mystery of Triton's weird orbit. But astronomer Dr. Craig Agnor has a theory. Because Triton is going in the opposite orbital direction of all of its neighbors, the general idea for its origin is that it made a close approach to Neptune, and it somehow became a bound companion. Triton came from somewhere else, flying through space until it hit something near Neptune and was captured by the planet's gravity. But even this extraordinary idea only partially solves the mystery. If the object that Triton collided with was large enough to slow it down and enable its capture, it was also likely large enough to destroy it. To date, no one has explained how or why Triton survived its hypothetical collision. 